Cheers. Cheers. All right. So this is our attempt at kind of a doing a uh, final wrap up of our uh, great adventure. And I have to say, I do like uh, being able to do the videos with beverages and, uh, and draft conditioning beer. and you know all that. It's yes, kinda, it's kind of nice. All the um, comforts of modern society. Nearby yes. privies. Yes. Yes. <laughs> AC. Yeah. Beer. And um, if you get hot and sweaty, you take a shower. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if we take too long with this, we don't have to worry about running out of power. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, anyways, we thought we would just do a, a final wrap up of uh, our trip and, you know, just try to do our best to kind of look back at some different things and, and just try to summarize a lot of it. Um, you know, the big thing is, I think, as you've seen through all the videos, uh, you know, again, our our approach to all this was a flip-flop. You know, if, uh, if you remember, most people most people will do a kind of a northbound hike from Springer going all the way to Maine. Other people will do it from Maine going down to Springer. And then a, a fewer number of people will do what they call a flip-flop, where you start somewhere on the trail and go in one direction until you get the end and flip mm -hmm. back and then go the other direction to the other end. And that's what we decided to do. And if you remember, and again, it just kind of summarizes some of the things from before. You know, we did this to, for a couple of reasons. One is that we decided that in light of everything that was going on, you know, COVID, all those kind of things, that we decided it would be best to try to minimize uh, being amongst the crowd and everything and, and just be respectful of, of the whole situation and what was happening. So when we started out in Mount Rogers, which basically the partnership shelter, right. uh, mile marker 534 ish, um, we, we basically accomplished that. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some of that. Uh, but so then we hiked up to Katahdin and then we flew back, took a little bit of a break uh, for me to attend my son's wedding, which is really nice, by the way. Yeah, yeah really well. Um, and then we got back on trail and hiked down or from Partnership Shelter and hiked down to Springer. Yeah, so, so we, we, had, took, yeah. We, had to, we had that four week break, which was great to recover yeah. and then go, went and finished it off in another four weeks. Yeah, yeah. So we did roughly about 141 days. Um, if you look at kind of what our start times were for the, those two beginning days, we, we did roughly 141 days. And we averaged about 15 and a half miles, uh, which is much better than we had, had anticipated at all. In fact, when we were looking at trying to determine when we were gonna get to Katahdin, the key thing was we needed to be done by July 1st, yeah. uh, just so I could have time to get to California for a July 10th wedding. Uh, what it turned out, you know, I think we, I think it was like 13 we needed to do, 13 a day, mm -hmm. something like yeah. that. And we thought it was pretty realistic for considering us. And old guys. Old guys. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but yeah, old guys, the Codgers. That's how you get um, handicapped, you know. This. Yeah. yeah, but we ended up doing, I think on that on the northbound trip, we were roughly about 14 and a half, somewhere, yeah. somewhere close to, to upper 14s. So much better than we anticipated, which meant we, we got down quicker than we expected. Yeah. And that kind of resulted in us having a little bit longer time off because uh, it didn't make sense for us to flip and try to do anything prior to needing to get off for the wedding. Um, and I don't know if he could have dragged me off the couch anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> As I got back down here, like naps and on the couch was good. But yeah. uh, an interesting thing, uh, and <clears throat> I have a bunch of stats here that <clears throat> geeking out with all the stuff. Did a pretty good job of trying to take notes. And, good job on the yeah, spreadsheet. Yeah. You know, being, okay. being a spreadsheet geek, yeah. my hat's off to you. Yeah. Well, you know, that's my thing. Um, but, you know, I, I would try to keep just some rough notes every day of kind of where we started, when we started, when we ended, you know, where we were at, just kind of rough feelings throughout the day. And we, and Elwin, as a part of that, my little Fitbit watch here would uh, help keep track of the steps that I took yeah. and the calories that I burned and so forth. So for me, it ended up being roughly about 4.7 million steps. Now, it might have been a little bit more for you. Quite, a few, <laughs> quite a few more for me, I'm sure of that. <laughs> Um, Quite a bit more. Yeah, because the strides are a little bit different. That, you know, one of the things I talk about, you know, my wife has one as well. When we go walking, it, I, I almost, she almost does twice as many steps as I do. Mm -hmm. You know, so probably would have taken her roughly 9 million steps to get there. But anyways, for us, it was roughly around 4.7 million. And again, counting calories and everything for me was about 350 calories per mile. Wow. Now, per mile, you've already got it down I've got it broken mile. down to per mile. Per mile. Uh, I had days where I had uh, exceeded, eight, I had one day where I exceeded 8,000 calories in a day, but 
but most of the time it was right around the 5,000. It's interesting when I looked at it, the first few weeks were a lot of calories being burned. And then as I kind of settled in, got a little bit in shape, cardio got better, the calories went down, the calories per mile went down and so forth. So it's kind of really wow. interesting just to see that. And I'm sure that I'll be doing some graph and everything else to uh, You know, part of that was, because yeah. you were carrying less weight because you lost a lot of weight. Uh, well, that, that could be part of it too. If you're yeah. carrying 30 less, 30, 40 pounds less, yeah. and you're carrying, you know, you could be doing less calories per mile. Yeah, and so with that, uh, I know personally I lost 40 pounds on this hike and I lost 32. Yeah, and actually I lost 40 pounds going to Katahdin. And then when I got off trail, I put on about 10 pounds during that four week period. And then I lost those 10 pounds again on the last school mm -hmm. night Springer. So I actually lost 50, but gained 10. But gained 10. <laughs> the net was 40. Um, anyway, so yeah, that was uh, quite, a, quite an interesting thing as you look at the actual numbers of everything, um, of what we did and, and uh, how we did it. And what was pretty amazing is we, you know, the, the average miles per day for the whole trip and then versus the last four weeks that we did. When we went out for the last four weeks, we were worried about our legs having been on, a, you know, Basically, we, we didn't really work out too much in that last four weeks. You know, I did a little bit of jogging, David did a little bit of hiking and stuff, but we knew that it would come back. And we got back out on the trail. We averaged almost 20 miles a day for the last 29 days, which it was surprising. We uh, were feeling it, but we, uh, we were able to put out the miles. It was yeah. definitely uh, easier being down here than it was up there. Yeah. And with that, it's really interesting that, you know, Joe and I have done a lot of section hikes, and as a part of that, down in the, in the south area, and, and we've done section hikes in the fall where you start to see a lot of southbounders that started in Maine would come through. And, and I always remember we would see them and they were just pumping the miles out. They, they were, were flying. Like, they were ready to be done. We hated know? them. Yeah. <laughs> and we were just always comment, wow, that's, that's pretty wild. Yeah. Well, sure enough, you know, for us, when we got down to, you know, the southern part, we had a couple days where, you know, we set our kind of mile high days of coming out of the Smokies. We did 31 and a half miles. Yeah. And then coming, going into Springer, coming out of Neil Gap, we did 31.3. Yeah. And it's like, oh my goodness. But it was, it wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't that big a deal because we were in shape. The terrain would allow us to do that. The weather allowed us to do it. And we weren't carrying cold weather gear. Right. So our packs, the weight in our packs was a lot less. So all those things come together and you start to realize that's how people can really put out the miles. When all the things start coming together, the weight they're carrying, the terrain, their conditioning, you can you can knock it out. And, and then, then the motivation, you know, yeah. just that, you know, as much as, and, and well, you know, we, a lot of, it, it, we had a good time, yeah. you know, but when you get to the end of it and you're down to that last couple of weeks, it's like ready to be done. Yeah. You know, some people will say they miss it, you know, you have torn feelings and I can see that, you know, yeah. it's like, eh, I hate to see it over, but the feeling more was I'm ready to be done Yeah. versus let's keep this going. So as a part of that kind of factored into, yeah, let's just push the miles. Yeah. And, um, so. Especially the last day. Yeah. Bad, bad weather. Wouldn't be worse weather the next way. Next day, we had freeze with us. So we had the ability to get it done and then be and change our clothes and be sitting in a dry car with a cold beer on the way to a fast food yeah. at the end of the day and not have to hike in, the, in Hurricane or Tropical Storm Ida the next day. So right. that was good. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we definitely had the proper motivation for it. So talk about the flip-flop, yeah. what our approach was, and um, can we talk a little bit about kind of the pros yeah. and cons around it? Yeah, and it, was, uh, the, it really was good from the standpoint of we didn't have to compete for resources right. at all. Uh, we, you know, shelters, we hadn't planned on staying in shelters that much, but there wasn't anybody on the trail much to speak of. So we could take advantage of the shelters and keep our gear dry and make it easier on us to not have to do as much tear down and set up every day. And, go for uh, the hostels and we rarely had any issues at all getting into hostels because there weren't other people out there on the trail so all that stuff was was really nice but you know the downside is is that you don't see as many people and some of the things we would have liked to have seen or done they were closed because it was too early in the season so those those kind of worked against us but but um it's it's just one of those offsets that you're going to have yeah yeah we started if you remember february 28th we started there again right around the partnership shelter and, and Joe and I were talking about it. I don't know weather wise uh, if it was abnormal uh, we really didn't have that bad of weather um, I'm gonna put it to uh, all the prayers that people were praying for <laughs> so I'll put that in there with it but 
Um, you know, we had some rainy days, but nothing really super bad. We probably had, we had one day they're going into Glasgow, the, yeah. trip, the next day is a zero because there's a bad storm coming through, and we set that one out. But most of the time it would be light rain. Mm -hmm. Fortunate that you know, when it rained hard, it was at night, and like you said, we were in a shelter most of the time, so we didn't have to deal with too much bad weather. We didn't, and that's just, you know, the, the lesson in that for any backpacker. Make sure you, you know, you have your, you know, smartphone with you and check the websites, look at the weather, pay attention to it, and uh, take advantage of that. And, yeah. you know, one of the things we talked about in the flip-flop, too, is um, it's uh, some of the people that we met, like Mr. Freeze, who got to hike with him quite a bit, and he's, you know, the, the codger gang, he's he's one of, the, one of us codgers. He started February 1st, and he experienced some of the same things we did, not seeing very many people. He was hiking alone a lot. He didn't have somebody like David and I had each other. And, you know, the hostels were, he wasn't competing for space or anything, but he just wasn't, things were closed and stuff. So he experienced some of the same things that we did that didn't have access to it. But starting February 1st, he had to deal with colder weather than we did and had to deal with the Smokies. Uh, which is one of the toughest things to do if you're if you're going to start early. So, um, if you, so if you plan on saying oh, I don't want to flip flop, but you're going to start earlier, just know that you'll have some of the same issues. You won't see as many people, which can be good and bad. Places will be closed. They don't compete for resources, but the weather can be colder for you. And we had cold days uh, again, and we had a few days where there were some snow flurries and. Mm -hmm. But you know, probably our biggest thing was I think it got down into low twenties. I don't know if we got into the teens. Low twenties for sure. Yeah. yeah, I think if we got into tweens, it might have been a day or, or two at the best. And you know, usually the toughest thing was just you know the wind. You know, we're walking ridge lines and stuff in the beginning, and, and the breeze you know, was kind of cutting you. But with that, one of the neat things of starting early was there were no leaves on the tree. And I know from you know just when we were doing our research and looking at uh, YouTube and what other people experience, you, they talk a lot about the Virginia blues and going through the green tunnel and all that. We didn't experience any of that because there was no green on the trees yeah. when we were going through Virginia. Uh, so we got to see a lot of views yeah. and a lot of ridgeline walking where you could just see both sides of it. Um, and I think that was a plus, we, yeah. you know, starting out early like we did. In a huge contrast to when we were hiking southbound on our last leg from Virginia south. We were in the tunnel and there were the leaves yeah. and we were we had a dearth of views there weren't there just weren't as many for us to see but we'd see right. a lot of leaves and we kept thinking back on wow this is so different than right. when we started we would just be like even though it's cold it would be often clear and you had these views right. and it was incredible right. uh, yeah you know and again when we flip back not only the leaves but the trail was way overgrown and i think that's probably just again that's I don't know if everybody would experience that because of how late we were coming into the south, but certainly southbounders are going to experience it, where you know some of the weeds were taller than we were. <laughs> you were at times were, were kind of wondering where the trail was, and the downsides you couldn't see the trail where you were putting your foot because the weeds were so grown in that you just had to kind of push your way through it. It really slowed you down. Yeah, and I know you know one of the things we experienced in the Smokies was that, as well as the trail not being well maintained in light of everything that's gone on over the last couple of years, a lot of washouts and so forth. And then the whole green tunnel aspect where you didn't have any views and it was raining on us. Um, and, and that kind of prompted us to push so hard to get yeah. out of the Smokies. There just wasn't any reason to take our time. It's like, well, let's just keep walking. And you know, we got through it in three days. Uh, yeah. with, with one of those being our, our highest mileage day, 31 and a half miles. Yeah. And the nature way we would hike typically is if the weather was gonna be good in the morning, we try to get up early and hike early and then take what the day gives you. And if you get into that mindset, then even if the weather's not that good, you've got still five hours of quote unquote daylight left, you're gonna to try to push further even if the weather's not right. good and get to some place where you can be dry. Right. So it was good. Yeah. So with that, um, I, I think, you know, overall, um, you know, overall good. Uh, you know, I, I've seen a lot of people asking questions about, you know, flip flops and how they should do it is it worth doing it you know a lot of people say no i want to finish on katah and i want to go you know north now you can do a flip-flop and still finish on katah yeah. and so i'm not sure that's that's a big of an issue but you know there's a lot to be said you know again as you mentioned we didn't we didn't meet a lot of people until we started uh, after we got to harper's ferry that's yeah. when we started running into more people certainly as we got closer to harper's ferry we started seeing some flip-floppers that were starting harper's going south and then a few that were going north, right. but we're just starting, so their pace was a little bit slower than where we were at the time. Um, but prior to that, 
you know, we saw section hikers, we saw some day hikers, and so we missed out a little bit, you know, right. you know, it was kind of neat when we started running into folks like Mr. Freeze and mm -hmm. others that, you know, you had a lot of just things in common, you just, you know, it was kind of cool to... Smiles and link and some of these yeah. folks, and you start yeah. hearing the stories of, you know, not so much, and other folks are around you, Captain Jack, and all of a sudden you're, so then you start to feel, you know, we, at, at times maybe we had a tramway, our tramway was really the two of us and Mr. Freeze, but yeah. we had, well, in, in Black Bear, you know, we, yeah. then we ended up with Duke of the Trail and, you know, Big Spoon and some yeah. folks, but, you know, we get hearing of these people around us and then ultimately you start running into them, you get closer to the end, yeah. more people. You know, with that, it's kind of a neat, uh, I, I, probably most people are aware, but each, each shelter has a register, uh, basically a notepad that you can write notes in it. And we would look at that, we tried to, we tried to sign them all, I know we missed a few of them, but the neat thing was you could see who else signed it. So in the beginning, it was like, oh, there's somebody ahead of us. Yeah. And you could say, oh, wait, that's that's somebody that's through hiking. Yeah. Um, and then eventually you would see the person, like Mr. Freeze, and mm -hmm. not so much as like, oh, hey, uh, you know, I've been seeing you in the in the uh, log book. So that's kind of neat, just yeah. a neat way to kind of see who's around you and, and, you know, what's going on. So. so probably, you know, one of the things, lessons learned, I guess. You know, yeah. what, what have we learned or, you know, as a part of that, what would we do different as we go forward? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things I always, that I always learned, you learn from your mistakes and it's your scar tissue that teaches you the most things. And I think um, most of our lessons learned that a lot of people might experience actually during or through hike, we got most of those out of the way on our section hikes because we did so many section hikes um, together in on the AT and um, we had our shakedown in the winter. A lot of the things that, that might have been more impactful to us, we kind of gotten that stuff out of the way. Fortunately, our shakedown hike in the winter, um, it, <laughs> it was pretty eventful. I know we've talked about it before with the snow and everything else and that, really taught us some things it did. Uh, that we needed to know that we weren't really prepared for and what's interesting though is then we prepared for them and got out on our through bike and we didn't encounter yeah, it again but we were ready for it yeah. Um, yeah one of the things i don't know we, we talked about it we kind of gave an overview of our flip-flop but we said it before in some of the videos that we had section hiked all the way up to partnership shelter over the last four or five years and so when we got to Katahdin, we, we had a true celebration of the fact that we had just hiked the whole AT. Mm -hmm. you, know, you could say a section hiked the whole AT. And then again, when we flipped back and with the Springer, we celebrated the fact that we threw hikes. So we got two celebrations. Yeah. Um, and so that was kind of cool because it's not like, you know, we got to Katahdin, it's like, ooh, big deal, we're not done. Well, yeah. we were done because yeah. of the fact that we, we had finished a section hike, I mean, of the whole of AT. the whole thing, yeah. So that was, that was kind of special for us. Uh, but I think with what, you know, Joe was just saying, we learned a lot through our, our shakedowns and for anybody that's getting ready to do any kind of, of long distance hiking, it really is critical to do some shakedowns. Uh, you know, one is to learn your gear, what works, what doesn't. Uh, you know, we had a lot of little things that you, we try out and say, ah, that didn't work. You know, the winter hike that we did in December back at the Grayson Highlands where we were hiking <laughs> blizzards and stuff, you know, I learned quickly that my, my sleeping pad was not warm enough. And that's such a critical thing. You can have the best sleeping bag in the world, but if you're sleeping on the cold ground, mm -hmm. it's it's not gonna help you. Uh, so I learned pretty quickly with that. We learned some other things. I, I learned some things about uh, some rain socks. Right, some rain waterproof, socks. Waterproof socks that helped tremendously with, particularly in the cold weather and the rain and the shoes that I had weren't, weren't waterproof. So that really helped me quite a bit. And there were other little things that we learned. Probably the bigger thing was that we can do this. Yeah, we, that we can, you know, we can get through it. and. We learned to, um, what was that, go bold, be cold, because we, we yeah. sweated our butts off on that winter hike, because we got, we were dressed, because we were cold, we would put a lot of stuff on to be warm, and we'd hike too long in our in our clothes, and then they would get wet, sweaty, and so we, by the time we got out on our through hike, we learned that now just take the time to strip off your layers as you go, and it, we ended up with a much better experience with our clothing, where our clothing was able to stay drier. And I guess for me, the worst thing I had to deal with is, I had a uh, quilt that I took on the through hike, and it was a 20, 20 degree quilt, but if you read the fine print, I, it was not necessarily rated at comfort level for 20 degrees. So I probably should have gotten a zero degree, would have been another maybe six ounces, and I probably probably would have been fine. But I managed to get through it, I just layered up and dealt with it. So you, know, you can get through those things as long as you aren't too far off the right. needle. Right. I did all right. You know what Joe said of uh, start you know, be bold, start cold, uh, was a big thing, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, you know, you literally would, 
I don't know for me and, and same for Joe is you would at, before you started hiking you would take off your jacket you know you might be there in the morning you know kind of shivering <laughs> and put your puffy on and say okay I'm feeling okay but you didn't want to start with that you you wanted to start as thinly as you could and you know because you know you're going to generate some heat and with that the other thing was that we learned <clears throat> was if you can start make sure that you position yourself that where the next day you're going to be doing an uphill right off the bat yeah just so you can warm up pretty quick and i had seen that in some other people's videos and comments you know after we had you know did our december hike it's like ah okay that's that makes a lot of sense because when it was cold and you got when you got going in the morning you wanted to move quick and you mm -hmm. wanted to get out the door and you wanted to warm up as fast as you can and the only way to do it again being being bold and going cold yeah. was to generate some body heat as fast as you could yeah and it's where a lot of times you would in your mind oh, man we're gonna have to go up the hill in the morning if it's cold and the last thing you're doing is you maybe you're pulling off your shell or one of your outer layers and you're packing away and immediately you're cold if you're pretty happy you're going uphill yeah you're like yeah let's get going and, yeah and it warms you up so fast and you're comfortable again right and yeah. it's almost kind of one of those uh, trade-off motivational things it's like mm -hmm. oh i gotta go up this steep hill but hey i'm gonna be warm yeah so it's kind of <laughs> i don't mind this this is good yeah. yeah so the other thing that uh we did and this was a big thing for joe and i is starting slow yeah. you know one of the things when we did all our shakedown hikes and section hikes we were terrible at you know, most of the time section hikes, I think we would usually do maybe a week, eight days, something mm -hmm. that we can have something like that. But you knew it was a section hike, so it's kind of like, you know, if we push the miles yeah. and we did 20 today, we could get to the end in a beer and a beverage faster. Faster. <laughs> uh, but of course, you know, at the end of that section hike, you're beat. Yeah, you're beat. You go home and you're tired and you're, oh man, that hurt. But you know, but you're done. You're yeah. done. Yeah. So we had to keep telling. It's almost like every morning, it's like, hey, Joe, we're going slow. We're, you know, when we did our plan, it's kind of like, okay, we're only going to do, I think the first week we averaged like seven and a half miles a day, which for us was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, part of that too is that first, the actual calendar day, the first day was only seven miles. Right. And, and I had planned it poorly. Our food drop was at this uh, hostel trying to keep our food light. So I think we only had six or seven miles into that. So we were like, we were like, I remember when we got there, we were like itching like, it's hard. I mean, when you end the day at, you know, close to noon, you know, one o'clock, two o'clock, you, you've done all your miles. And it's kind of like, uh, mm, and yeah. it was cold. Yeah. You so, want to, you want to get rolling. So yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm going to keep going. So we really had to force ourselves hard, uh, uh, you know, and it took us, um, you know, probably a couple of weeks before we we started pushing the miles a little bit further but, yeah. you know we were into the second week i think we we're starting to do some 15s and, 15s and looking at 19s and yeah, things like that yeah. and, but starting slow helped us quite a bit um, and that's yeah listen and you know forcing yourself to go slower that's some of the things i'd read too is even for the daily routine after you do your first hour you know you take a break and then go ahead and stretch again and everything else we didn't get that religious on on yeah. that. If we sat for too long, we'd stretch, but it's just it's so important to go slow and then listen to your body because no matter what your speed is, what is your body telling you? What yeah. are, you, are your joints hurting? You know, is your cardio really struggling? Um, you know, how are you feeling physically? Just don't, don't push yourself so far because um, one of the things that does happen is if you're, if you don't take breaks, let's say you're trying to go seven days without any appreciable break, your body doesn't get a chance to really rebuild the way it needs to rebuild. So you can't go too hard, too quickly. Yeah, and and as, as much as we sound like we had it all figured out, we didn't. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we started out pretty slow, but then we, we started pushing it a little bit. We you know, got a little bit, I don't want to say cocky, but we were feeling pretty good then. We were losing weight and stuff. So, yeah, we can do this yeah. now. And, uh, you know, I think as you saw in some of our videos, we started battling shin splints. Uh, you know, Joe started out with his and I think right, right on the roller coaster a little bit before that mm -hmm. and then mine started hitting hard right there at Harper's Ferry and you know again part of it was because one we we knew we should be stretching we weren't doing it religiously and then two we were pushing some I think the one week we had maybe prior to all that happening we had 100 and we averaged about 20 miles a day yeah for the whole week so it's about 140 miles we did and then we realized our body can't do this right um, you know and that's when we started having some shin splints and you know the smartest thing we did though and getting back to listening to your body was that we we took it to heart and we we backed off the miles yeah and, and i think this is where 
It was probably good when you're hiking with somebody else, and for Joe and I, we could just kind of keep each other in check. Keep keep each other honest on that, you know, because sometimes you're you want to man up and think you can go do it, and the other person you need to look the other person in the eye and have them tell you, no, you can't do it, or you yeah. can or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then you know, being respectful of the fact that okay, I feel good, but you don't. Yeah. And so we gotta you know run it together. So you know, if you're not if you're not doing good, then we slow down. If I'm not doing good, you slow down. And then that worked. I think if you were, I, I know for me, I'm, I'm kind of a goal-oriented person. If I'd have done this by myself, it would have been just boom, 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 boom. And I would have gotten in trouble. I probably would have hurt myself to the point where you had to get off. So this, this worked out pretty well with, um, you know, us listening to our body, mm -hmm. trying to be smart, starting out slow. Again, we weren't perfect with it, um, but we adjusted. Yeah, we adjusted. I think it's, it maybe is a case in point where the balance thing, Especially in the mornings, you know, we know from the videos, I'm the guy that's usually the last one to get ready to get going in the morning. I tried and I got better, but I tried to still be religious about stretching, even though David is already ready to go and get going. But me having to stop and stretch because I was slower forced him to do more stretches. So I think that might have helped you out. <laughs> Because I'd be there stretching, and he's right. Okay, I guess you'd lay down, you'd stretch right. out your back some more, and you'd get ready. Right. Yeah. So, and again, Linda, thank you for all of your help with telling us and giving us a good routine that we could do again. It took us a while to get to the point where we, we did it religiously, but we did. And it certainly made a difference, particularly after the shin splints. And then, you know, when we were battling shin splints, uh, thank you to my son Tyler, who's yep. an athletic trainer that gave us some advice. And we actually had him on the phone and taking pictures of what our legs look like. And he gave us some stretches and things that we needed to do. To Walking through our symptoms with us. And, you know, and the main thing is he gave us a sense of comfort that, okay, we hadn't done anything really bad yet. Right. And if we did these things and paid attention to these other things, and maybe we should be okay. And it gave us the confidence to right. kind of keep going. Because at that point, we're almost like, do we need to stop and regroup? Or do we need to go see a doctor? But after that, we just yeah. we dialed it back, managed it. And, and it was interesting, right. you know, the, the people that we did run into, we ran into several through hikers that had to get off the trail. Yeah. Whether it be right after we met them or, you know, telling the stories before they, you know, got, uh, before three, they met us. Three C. Pork chop, pork chop. Um, big spoon. Yeah, um, you know people that you know. A couple of those had to get off the trail for good because of you know issues that they had. And black bear had to get off because of his knees, but boom, he got back on. He did. Got it done. <laughs> um, anyway, so again, the whole thing of listening to your body is a big thing, and kind of jumping down to one of the things that we learned is this whole cumulative effect of of a through hike. Yeah. You know, Joe and I again, we we did a lot of section. Hikes. And, and it, the cumulative effect is you find out that you've drank so, oh no, that's no, 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 that's wrong, 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 okay, topic. keep going, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's one where you have to pick yourself off the ground and, you know, yeah, that, okay, yeah, we'll get to talk about that. Uh, but, you know, just, just getting that mindset, that this is a marathon, and, and this, as we've said before, it's not a race, so it's, that analogy is kind of a, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint, but it's not really a race, but the thing is, you've got to treat it in a manner that you can get to the end. Because again, our, our mentality before was section hiking, and it's yeah uh, a week. Mm -hmm. We can push it, and you know we'll get to the get to that restaurant, and we'll get that extra beer, yep. and yeah, we're going to be hurting hard to walk, you know, when we get out of the car. But hey, we, we got you know, we're done. Right. <laughs> um, it, it took us, you know, a, a change in mindset just to think in different terms, and then even with that said, is toward the end, you could feel it. You know, even, yeah. you know, Joe and I were comparing notes today. Our feet are still not where they need to be. It's, we've been off the trail almost four weeks now. We, yeah, we had a four-week break after Katahdin, got back on the trail four weeks, and we've been off for four weeks, and we're both we're both still still hurt. Yeah. I was at the orthopedic guy today. I finally got in to see him and, and, uh, for, my, for a shoulder, but that was not really related to the trail, per se. It's just the old guy falling down. But my feet still, if I'm barefoot walking around the house, my feet hurt. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's going to take a while yet to get over it. It takes, a, takes its toll. It does. And again, just not realizing that whole, again, cumulative effect of the wear and tear on your body. You know, certainly it was really fun when we got our trail legs. I think it was about three or four weeks before we really started hitting it. And we really felt them strong here when we did this southern section. It yeah. took us roughly about a week. And I don't even say a full week to kind of get back to where we mm -hmm. were when we right. got into Katahdin. But then with the trail being the way it was, I mean, we we were flying and, and feeling great. Mm -hmm. but, but, it, but it's 
just flashing back. We had some times though, it really was fun where when you did have your trail legs and the trail was there for you and the weather's good and everything else, you'd just be taking off and oh, yeah. Dave was like, I think I'm gonna go. You go, all right, we'll catch up. You, well, I remember in the, the 100 mile wilderness and uh, I don't know if it was going into Abel Bridge or whatever it was, Joe's like, I'm feeling it, I'm gone. He'd always call it, set his happy feet up. Joe's got his happy feet. And he was, I couldn't even come close to keep this. I, got, I think I saw, he's up there somewhere. But when you're when you're feeling it, and the trail gives it to you, and it's really fun. It's it makes, fun. It's like feeling like you're a kid again, and you can get all the pieces moving, and yeah. the feet are sticking where they need to. It, it can be a lot of fun. Yeah. But again, the the thing that we learned is that there is a cumulative effect. That even if you try hard to take care of yourself, you're still it's going to add up. Yeah. Uh, and you're going to feel the aches and pains and everything else that come along with it. So you just have to be realistic with that. Yeah. You and you got to you got to listen. Be realistic and listen to your body. Yeah. Yeah.